time for the last real lesson in this unit. I'm going to give you two additional lessons um, that are add-ons in this. Um, tomorrow it's going to be additional word problems. That's not going to include a video, so make sure that you watch this video and understand everything. If you have any questions, tomorrow is an office hours day. So while you're completing your additional word problems, you can ask questions um, during the time slot that I have for you guys. Um, and then after that, there's one more um, add-on lesson, and then we'll be reviewing, okay? So today's lesson is everyone's favorite, word problems. So we're going to be able to apply what we've learned about quadratics to word problems. So now that we have the zero product rules and method for solving quadratic equations that are factorable when we set them equal to zero, we can also model scenarios that are quadratic in nature and solve them for rational solutions with factoring. So for exercise one, we're going to consider a, a rectangle whose area is 45 square feet. If we know that the length is one less than twice the width, then we would like to find the dimensions of the rectangle. So, if we represent the width of the rectangle using W, we're going to write an expression for the length in terms of W. So I know that the length is one less than twice the width. So the length is one less than twice the width. Okay. Now we're going to use this and set up an equation that could be used to solve for the width. So, I know that the area of a rectangle is length times width, right? So, I'm going to replace the L with this little equation that I've written here. So, it will be 2W minus 1 times W. Okay, now I'm going to swap this around. And I know that the um, area is equal to 45, so I'm going to swap this around. I'm going to put the W in the front times 2w minus 1 is equal to 45 square feet. So now for part C, I'm going to actually solve this equation and I'm going to find both of the dimensions. Then we're going to answer this question saying why is one of the solutions for w not viable? Remember viable means possible, realistic, etc. So here's my equation I just came up with. w times 2w minus 1 equals 45. So let's solve. Now, first things first, I need to distribute this w. So this is 2w squared minus w times 1 w equals 45. So at this point in the past, we would be saying, I have no idea how the heck to solve this. So what we're going to do instead, instead of freaking out, is we're going to use what we've learned about the zero product law. And we're going to solve this by setting it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract my 45 from both sides, which will leave me with 2w squared minus w minus 45 equals zero. Okay. Now I want to be thinking if I have a GCF here, which I don't. And if I can't just factor this out with double bubble, I want to think about grouping, okay? This is not the nicest one, but if you use grouping, what we're thinking of, 2 times negative 45 is negative 90. So I want to think of the two numbers that will multiply together to give me negative 90, but will add up to negative 1. So this one's pretty obvious, okay? So it's going to be negative 10 and 9 because negative 10 times 9 is negative 90 and negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. So to factor this, remember you keep your, your first term 2w squared and I'm replacing this negative w with these two. So it's going to be negative 10w plus 9w minus 45 equals 0. And this is where we group or split it up, right? factor out uh, the GCF. In this case, it'll be 2W. I can take a 2W out of both of these. And what's left is W minus 5. Okay, so over here, I know I'm going to have to have a W minus 5, right? So it'll help you factor something out. 
In this case, it's going to be the 9, so it's going to be positive 9. That leaves me with w minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so now I have my first binomial is going to be 2w plus 9. And the second is the w minus 5 equals 0. So now I'm going to actually solve. I'm going to take it over here so I have a little more room. Okay, so I have 2w plus 9 times w minus 5 equals 0. Split them up. 2w plus 9 equals 0 and w minus 5 equals 0. Subtract 9 from both sides and divide by 2. So the first answer I get is negative 9 halves. And then here add 5 on both sides, and w equals 5. So as it said before, which one of these is not viable? Which one does not make sense? Well, it's going to be this one, because width can not be negative, right? So the answer that we're looking for here would be 5. So they want us to find both dimensions. Okay, now I know that the width is 5, so I'm going to go back in to my original equation. We know that the area is equal to 45. The length times the width, it should be 45, right? The length times w, which is 5. What did I do? Sorry. That should be L instead of w. Confused myself. Length times width, sorry. So I divide 5 both sides. The length is 9. Okay? So your length is 9 feet and your width are 5 feet. Is 5 feet. Sheesh. Okay? This is a little complicated, I know, but it's really nothing bad. It's just a lot of steps. So, exercise 2. We have a square that's got one side increased in length by 2 inches. So that means we're starting off with a square, okay, and a square uh, has the same sides, right? One of these sides gets increased by two inches, right? So let's just say it's this side. Now that has become x plus two. Then it has another side, the adjacent side, decreased in length by two inches. So now this side has turned into x minus two. If the resulting rectangle has an area of 60 inches, what was the area of the original? Okay, so first draw some possible squares if you can do it by guess and check, and we're going to do it algebraically. We're not going to do the guess and check unless you'd like to, um, but I'm going to do it this way. It just makes a little more sense to me. This is our original. One side was added by two, the other subtracted by two. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area, uh, we know the area of this one, right? Length times width, x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 60. So what we need to do is we need to solve for x. If we can find x, then we can find the original area, okay? So in order to find x, what we're going to do is we're going to solve this. So. This is slightly different. In this case, you're not finding zeros, right? We don't want to know where it's equal to zero. That doesn't help us. What we want is what is x equal to. So here what we have is x plus 2, x minus 2, which hopefully you are thinking of difference of two perfect squares. This is square the first, square the second, stick a minus in between, and that's equal to 60. Okay, now let's solve for x. I can add 4 on both sides, and then I get x squared is equal to 64. And now, I can take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to, remember I told you guys when you do this, it's really plus or minus each time, but we're dealing with length and width and stuff here, so we don't need to account for the negative. Square root of 64 is 8. Okay, so that means that the original sides were equal to 8. So if this is 8, this is 8, right? So the new area, or the, sorry, the original area was 8 times 8, which is 8 squared, which is the same as this, 64 inches squared. Okay? 
So you may not have thought to yourself that I need to solve for x here instead of looking for zeros. So try to be careful. Okay. All right, let's finish this up. Exercise three. Um, there are two rational numbers that have the following property. When the product of seven less, here we go. The product of, remember that separates it, seven less than three times the number, that's one part, with one more than the number is found. It is equal to two less than 10 times the number. Okay, got to be super, super careful with this. And we're going to use what we can to try to find these two numbers. The product of, so we have seven less than three times the number. So seven less than three times the number, let's say it's x. The product of that with one more than the number. So that's x plus one. When this is found, it is equal to two less than 10 times the number. So that's 10 x, okay? Now you could use n, you could use a, you could use anything you want, all right? So here is what I get when I do this. So first things first, let's try to figure out what the heck we should do here, okay? Um, what I'd like for you guys to do is, um, I mean, you can, I think you could do this on your own. Yeah, I'll just do it with you because I don't want it to be too confusing. So first what we're going to do is we're going to multiply um, on the left, okay? And I'm going to then bring over what I can so I can set it equal to zero, okay? So let's, I'm going to use FOIL here, but you can use your box method if you like. This is 3x squared plus 3x minus 7x minus 7 equals 10x minus 2, okay? Now, before I start moving things, I'm going to take care of this. This is 3x squared minus 4x minus 7 equals 10x minus 2. Now, let's get 0 on the right. Subtract 10x from both sides. This is 3x squared minus 14x minus 7 equals 2. And now let's subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, and that will leave me with... Is that a minus? Sorry, this is a minus 2, so we're adding. Um, so this is 3x squared minus 14x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, and now I need to factor this. So in order to do this, you're going to want to use your grouping, okay? Can't factor out of GCF here. So to do grouping, we're taking the first and last term and multiplying them together. That's negative 15. I want to think of the two numbers that will multiply to give me negative 15, but will add to give me negative 14. Okay, so let's see what we get here. If I do negative 15 and positive 1, that will multiply together to give me negative 15, and it will add up to negative 14. So I'm going to take it up here using those two numbers. So I have 3x squared, and instead of writing negative 14x, I'm going to do the negative 15 and the 1. So negative 15x plus 1x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, now it's time to group them. I'm going to factor out a GCF from here. That's going to be 3x and I'm left with x minus 5. And you see you already have your x minus 5 here, so what you want to factor out is the 1. x minus 5 equals 0. So then you can see that when you write this as two binomials, you have 3x plus 1 times x minus 5. Okay, and now we can solve for the zeros. So 3x plus 1 equals 0, and x minus 5 equals 0. Subtract 1, subtract 1. 3x equals negative 1, divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals negative 1 third. Okay? And then over here we add 5 to both sides. <laughs> and x is equal to 5. 
So, whew, that was a lot of work, right? So now what we want to think of is, is this actually going to, um, is it actually going to satisfy the requirements? And if you plugged everything back in, you would find that it is, okay? So we have x equals 5 and x equals negative 1 third. Of course, who can forget our work with consecutive integers? So for exercise 4, we're going to find the sets of two consecutive integers such that their product is 8 less than, their product is 8 less than 10 times the smaller integers. So remember when you're doing consecutive integers, you state, let n equal the first integer or the smaller, whichever one you like to say, and then n plus 1 will be the second or the larger integer. Okay, so when we multiply these together, their product, n times n plus 1, it's equal to 8 less than 10 times the smaller one. So 8 less than 10 times the smaller one. The smaller one is n. So 10n. Okay? So I'm going to have you guys pause and try to solve this one and then unpause to check. Okay, guys. This was a fairly simple one, so hopefully it didn't give you too much trouble. After we set this up, you solve and set it equal to zero. So I subtracted 10n and I added eight. Ended up with n squared minus nine n plus eight, which was a nice easy one to factor. And I found that n was equal to eight and n was equal to one. So you have to think about what the question is asking you. It wants you to say the consecutive integers. So if n could be eight, then the next consecutive integer is nine. So that's one possibility. And the other possibility is that n is one and the next consecutive integer would be two. So these are your two possible sets of consecutive integers, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing with number five, we'll set it up, and then you guys can solve it yourself. Brunson claims that the number five has the property that the product of three less than it with one more than it is the same as that means equals three times one less than it. So we're going to show that Brandon's claim is true. And then algebraically, we're going to find the other number for which it's true. Okay, so we're going to show that Brandon's right by using five. So he's saying the product of three less than five. So three less than five. Let's write it out like this first. The product of three less than five with one more than five. So that's five plus one is the same as three times one less than five, which is five minus one. So let's show that this is true. So three less than five is two, one more than five is six, and this is supposedly equal to three times one less than five, which is four. So this is true, 12 equals 12. So Brandon's right. Now they're saying that there's one other number that this is true for. So we're going to find that by replacing all the fives with an X or any other number, letter, whatever you want to use. Let's go with N just for fun. So 3 less than N. So that's N minus 3 times 1 more than N. N plus 1 is the same as 3 times 1 less than 1. Okay, you can also just replace all the fives with Ns. And now we're going to solve this. So I want you guys to do this on your own. Multiply here, multiply here, get it equal to zero, and find the zeros, okay? So pause and then try this out. Okay, so here's the solution. When you solve this, okay, multiply here using foil or box or whatever, then subtract everything, distribute here subtract everything and add everything so that you get zero on the other side and you end up with n squared minus 5n equals zero. Then I use GCF to factor out an n and I have n times n minus 5. I get n equals zero on this side and n equals 5 on this side. We already knew that 5 was one of the solutions. 
So we were supposed to find the other number, which means the other number was zero. Okay, guys? I know this is kind of a lot, and word problems are tricky because they're never the same. Just give it your best shot. And then remember, tomorrow we have an extra day of practice. And I will post the answer key for that. Okay? Have fun.